Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's been requested multiple times now that I do some videos on the design of steel connections and what I thought might be quite a good idea is to do like a little mini series on the multitude of different types of steel connections. It's actually quite uncommon for the lead structural engineer to do the steel to steel connection design. It's normally down to the steelwork subcontractor to do the steel connection designs. Nevertheless, it's still really important as the lead structural engineer or just any structural engineer to know the sort of basics of steel connection design because you will be doing a lot of review work of the steelwork drawings and the connection calculations. It's really important that as the lead structural engineer on the project that you are actually accountable for all the subcontractor works. So it's really important that you review the steelwork packages really, really thoroughly, which is why you really need to know the basics and understandings of steelwork connection design. So this video is the sort of introduction to this um, sort of multi-part series of steelwork connection design. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of list out kind of the most common types of steelwork connections which you might come across. So the first one on this list is fin plates and this is probably the most common. It's the most simple and it's probably the most cost-effective steelwork connection. It's often called a pin connection because it doesn't have the stiffness to transfer any moments and a, and a fin plate connection can only really transfer um, shear forces and actual forces. Essentially what fin plates are is if you're trying to say connect a beam to a column you basically have a plate welded to the beam and also to the column and basically they have holes pre-drilled pre and basically you lift the beam to the column and then you install the bolts and that's how you fix the column to the beam. I'll be demonstrating an example of a fin plate design later on in this video so make sure you continue watching. So next we have an end plate connection and this is probably the second most common type of connection which you'll come across and essentially what it is is just a plate welded to an end of a beam which is just fixed and bolted to um, a column flange. Now an end plate does have some stiffness to transfer some moment but not too much um, and of course it can also transfer axial and shear forces. Next we have a haunched connection and essentially this is just an adaptation of an end plate connection and essentially what this does is it allows the connection to generate or resist more moment. This is very commonly found in portal frame structures um, or like big steel sheds or warehouses. If you just have a look around you'll probably see these very commonly. Next we have a splice connection and this is when you have like a steel column or steel beam which is too long to transport so you need to split the column into a few sections and then you can bolt the sections together on site. A splice connection is going to be made up of just a series of plates um, which is going to be pre-welded to the web and the flange and then when it comes to site you just bolt them together. Next we have a slotted hole connection and this is basically a connection when you don't want a structural element like a column to take a certain force. This is very common in sort of wind posts where a wind post is there really just for the lateral resistance um, and you put a vertically slotted hole in the connection so that it can't resist any or take any actual forces. And finally we have base plates to columns and typically I will try to push these to the steelwork subcontractor to put it in their package design but sometimes it will be up for you to do the steel to concrete connection designs. This is an example which I got from an SCI document called P212 which is the British standard design example. If you want the Eurocode version, go find SCI P354. The reason I'm showing you the British standard version and not the Eurocode version is because the British standard version is easier to follow. They both follow the same principles, but if you are new to connection design, I think learning the basic fundamentals is easier with the British standard version. The formulas are slightly different and the notations will be different as well, but the fundamentals will be largely the same. Feel free to pause and copy the example as you please. Connection designs can take a really long time, which is why it's really computerised these days. I think this video would be far too long for me to do it step by step like I've shown in other videos, so I'm sort of cheating this time round and showing a pre-made example and explaining some of the steps instead. So in this example, it's two beams being fixed into the side of another beam via a fin plate connection. You'll be using grade 8.8 M20 bolts with 6mm welds and the steel grade is S275. Because fin plate design is relatively simple, just like the blue book for steel sections, there are capacity tables for fin plate design. This page is just showing you what the design would be like from the tables. 
So first we follow the recommended detailing rules, so we try a 10mm thick fin plate because we are using a 20mm diameter bowl. Then we can assume a fin plate length based on 0.6D of the web length. The second check is to find the bulk capacity. It is essentially following a set of equations based on the parameters of the steel sections and the number of bolts to see if the applied shear force is less than the shear bolt resistance of the bolt group. We need to make sure we do the check for both sides. Note that the left hand side is a single line of bolts and the right hand side is two rows of bolts. So now we need to check the local failure of the fin plates themselves to make sure that the plates are sufficient to resist the shearing forces. We also need to check for local bending failures caused by the shear forces. So now we need to check the beams themselves at the point of connection. So this is the location of the bolts and the web of the beam. The reason I'm not going into too much detail in the equations themselves is because there aren't any special nuances to these equations, there's nothing cheat-like worthy to mention, you just simply have to plug in the numbers and follow the equations as they are. Because the beams connecting into the main beam is notched, we need to check that the reduced section size doesn't fail. We also need to check that the local stability of the notched beam is stable against lateral torsional buckling. As long as you are satisfying the basic requirements for welds, that should be fine. In another video, I'll show you how to calculate the strength of a weld. And the final check is to check that the beam supporting both of these incoming beams is going to be strong enough. So we just need to check that the local capacity of the beam web is sufficient. Hopefully you found this video useful. Please remember to like and subscribe so that you get notified for when I post the next part to this mini series. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.